Is there 2000, any way you want? 2011 Ultimate Builder Bike Show in Daytona Beach, Florida. We're talking to Tony Giese, and he is our crack photographer taking a picture of every one of these bikes in the Ultimate Builder American Championship. And Tony, just say hi to us, please. Hey, how you doing there? There you go. Now, we're going to look over Tony's shoulder, and we're going to kind of just discuss a little bit about taking pictures of the bikes. This is pro work, but this will translate to everyday photography. So we'll let Tony go ahead and shoot. All of a sudden, you're going to see everything white out when he hits Fires the flash. The, he's got a uh, Nikon. Uh, he's got a Nikon. He's using a uh, a wizard on there. Pocket wizard on top, yeah. And then that fires some uh, white lightning. He's got one, two, three, four, four white lightning, uh, 1800 watt second lights. And you'll notice it goes blank every once in a while. And that's because he's overpowering everything with the flash. Uh, his light, he puts out a lot more light than my camera can handle, but that doesn't matter. The idea is, is we're watching him work. Now, this is a modified Harley that he's shooting, and this is one of the looking good. The perks of hold that up again for me, Tony, please. All righty. Uh, let's see. We'll see how good I am at this. Well, we focused in on that. And we got a bike. All right, perfect. Thank you, Tony. Okay, you're welcome. Yep, this is a nice one. You get a lot of beautiful bikes here. With this, every one of, if you go to the American Championships in Daytona, we set up a professional photo shoot for your bike. Tony, if you were going to shoot somebody's bike for a job, what would you charge to do that? Somebody's bike for a job? If somebody says, hey, I want a shot like this, and you're going to have to set it up in a studio, maybe rent a studio or set something up where you've got everything. It's not a cheap thing to do, is it? No, it varies. You know, usually I have a day rate of 2000 for a day and 1000 for a half day. That so includes full right, right usages and all that too. So it's so going to be a thousand up. Could be thousand, two, three thousand dollars, right? It depends on how involved, yeah. Sure. You know, most people can't, wouldn't budget that kind of money for that, but... They could you know, go there. They could, yeah, yeah. So this is something Tony's doing uh, that Ultimate Builder is handling for all the builders. So if you've come to the show, you're in, entered in the show, you're going to get a photo shoot. And that is not a giveaway. That's something that they're getting. They get a CD. They get a CD with on that. Release of rights on it. So it's a great deal for them. And it's good for Tony because he does a heck of a job. He has some beautiful bikes. Um, Love shooting the bikes. And with this, the builder can use this in any sort of promotional work. It can go on uh, for a magazine. Correct. It could go in a brochure. It could go any place. You've got a white background. At that point, you can make it anything you want. You can put it on the beach. You can do whatever you want. But now you've got a bike that, with the background and everything completely whited out, and you've got a standalone bike. That's why the bike looks so good, because it stands on its own. It doesn't have a busy background. Now, what Tony's shooting is any place from about F16 to F22. What that means is, is the depth of field is very, very uh, sharp for this. It's sharp all the way through. So, as you see him sitting down on the floor there, um, he's close to the pipes. Those are just as sharp as the spokes on the wheel. The back wheel, the front wheel, the pipes, all of those are are very very sharp meaning that there's they're not blurry at all so when we look at something like that that's part of shooting a, a bike with the background that's completely obliter obliterated and the reason it's white is that he's overexposing well you're overexposing the background by about at least two stops two stops pretty close to that yeah so it gives him a white background one stop usually so he goes between one and two stops. And you'll notice that he's not wearing, he's wearing basically white. Why? Because any color he would wear would be reflected in, in any of the chrome on That's the bike he's shooting. So he's got to be just as innocuous as all these white curtains. We're gonna pull back here while he's shooting and you'll see that basically this whole area, it's about 30 by 60 feet, is all covered in white. The floor is white, the ceiling is white, 
we're tarped all the way around and the reason for that is is that this way there's no extraneous reflections that's going to affect what him, he's shooting. You can see in this shot that we've got the uh, alien bees there on, um, excuse me, the uh, white lightnings there. Off to the right of this, this we have a uh, soft box and he's got another 1800 in there. Oops, sorry about the focus on that. And then he's got a, another 1800 here and a, another one to the left. And he's got one, you've got one more, you got four, don't you, Tony? Yes, we got one Off behind. The, oh, behind the, uh, the, the, yeah, behind the backdrop. Oh, okay. Now he's on the ladder and he's getting some of the high shots. This is not something you just throw together. This is something that requires somebody who actually cares about what they're shooting. You've got an eye, and he's using, uh, which Nikon are you using? Uh, this is a D300. Okay, he's using a digital Nikon D300. 14 to 24 ED lens. All right, that 14 to 24 translates into being a wide angle lens. That allows him to be close to the bike and still cover the whole bike instead of having to be 15 or 20 feet away to cover it. He's Gives you a little, little perspective in the bike too, which is kind of nice. Let's explain perspective. It just kind of makes it, uh, perspective is uh, from longer from front to back and lets you, when you do artwork or whatever, you always want to have perspective and it kind of leads you into the photograph. So that's so, what helps. So what we're saying is that if you were to look at railroad tracks they go in that's what's called perspective they're clo they're wider as you see them and as they go back Narrows to down. zero as yep. they go into the horizon. especially when you shoot down the side of the bike it adds a nice perspective to it you don't want to be ultra wide but you know just a little bit of width helps if you're ultra wide what happens is that you start getting some barrel distortion well it, and start yeah. getting some curved lines and stuff like that it, it's a little too wide. much yeah. yeah a little too much this is just a piece of it all right We'll go ahead and we'll let him shoot a little bit. Uh, just so happened Scott came in to take a look at the, at the bike. And uh, with here, the customers can come in and take a look. In this case, we have Scott, his wife, and daughter and mother-in-law. Sorry I didn't guess what that was, but uh, <laughs> they're, watching, they're watching it shoot. Uh, what what uh, Tony's allowed everybody to do is if, if the uh, viewers at the uh, bike show want to come in, as long as they're quiet and they're not taking pictures, they can come in and take a peek at him actually working. And so we've, uh, and a lot of times the builder wants to come in to see what his bike looks like. And in this particular case, You'll see that Scott's handling uh, handling the chore admirably. So, Tony, how would they get a hold of you if they wanted to? Uh... Uh, TonyGC.com. T O N Y G I E S E. And you are available for uh, hire, correct? That's correct. Your commercial work is primarily what I do. Anything you'd like to tell anybody before we uh, wrap this up? Come on to Daytona and have a good time. Tony, it's an awesome show. Very, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>